Hi everyone, welcome back into the Academy here at Chesterfield Golf Club for another video. Thank you very much for joining me on this Friday. My name is Warren Bennett and unfortunately you could probably hear Trev on the floor there with his ball. So if that gets a little bit too much, I'll take it off him, so not to worry there. So the importance of this right arm and how we can learn to get this right arm in the slot, because what we say a lot on the videos, if you've listened to a few before, is how important this right arm is. If this right arm's in the wrong position at the top of our backswing, that doesn't help obviously where we are halfway down. And if you can get this right arm in a position, this right elbow in a position halfway down, pretty much from there you're gonna let physics take hold, which may basically means let the club go and let it do its thing. But if you're in the wrong position, you're gonna learn how to compromise really, and compensate, that's the word I'm looking for is compensate. So if you're in the wrong position, if your arm's away from you coming down, you can't help but car. So you're going to have to do something to correct that and get the ball back online. So it's inconsistencies. And what we say to a lot of our clients are, or is, um, consistency. And consistency to me is just another word for a lack of compensation. And if you have less compensations going on with your swing, you will have a more reliable swing. So this is all about the right arm and how effective we can get this arm, put this in a position at the top of our backswing, and that's gonna help our downswing from there. So I'll talk you through it. So let's work on this backswing to start with. Actually, we're gonna bring it back even further. Very quickly, let's work on this right arm and our posture because if we can get our right arm nice and soft at address, and to help that get your, the, the uh, grip in your fingers of your right arm, that's really gonna soft. Soften that right elbow there. And you can see from the behind view, it's now nicely tucked in. If you're over here, you're starting off from the wrong foot there. So remember what we say, we always get this first domino in the right place and then it's easier from there. So you know, when you go back to old Sevy videos, how he stood, beautiful right arm, just so soft and that kind of set him up for success on the backswing. So what you're looking for is your right elbow, if you can, to be a bit more in front of your shoulder my right shoulder there, with width. So from the behind view, you can see my hands and my right elbow is now in front of my right shoulder a little bit more. It's not behind me here and what's called deep. And then from the front view, you can see now, if I take my left arm away, you can see my right elbow. It's in the same place as where it was, but it's away from my body. It's not jammed up. Right, so one area, Bit of a broken record, but because I say it every time when we do a video pretty much, about on full swings anyway, is coil. So let's get our body turned and our core, that's what coil is, it's a core, it's a core coil. It's not just shoulders, there's no power there, build up. So it's a coil. So we're letting our pocket go a little bit behind us. And that's gonna help. So what happens there? The first, I don't know, third of the, the backswing is all about how we move our belly button and our belt buckle. If we're wearing a belt. And then from there, your shoulders take over. Now, the more you can get in this position, the easier it is for your arms to sit in front of you. If you don't coil, I hate the word, but turn your shoulders correctly, and let's say you don't, you can get your right arm in front of you, and then from the behind view, you can see, wow, my right arm's right in front of me. But if I take my left arm away, you can see how narrow and collapsed that is. Now I'm in the wrong position. It's got nowhere to go. Under speed, it's probably gonna get thrown out and cast. So remember those two really important factors to get this right arm in the position to drop in the slot. So, coil and fold. Three movements of the backswing. There's a coil of your body, there's a width of your left arm and a folding of your right arm and the hinging of your wrists. So there's your three golf balls, your three ingredients of the backswing. Coil of the body, and that's obviously coiling your belly button and then turning of your shoulders, together with a hinge and then a folding of the right arm and a nice width of the arms. So it's coil, hinge, width. Now I'm set myself up for success. Got a nice bit of weight on my back leg here. I'm not tilted over, but I haven't just swayed over with my shoulders, you see. 
that's a false move. So I'm keeping pretty stationary, as you can see from the front view. I don't really move them much, but because I'm moving my trunk and I'm moving my belt buckle, and I'm getting it kind of 45 degrees there. Now that's giving me a bit of spine angle. You can see now from my left pocket there to the back of my neck, I'm now coiled and spine angle away there. More importantly, the right arm is nicely folded. It's wide. Now I'm in the position to drop. Without too much thought, if you have a problem with coming over the top or casting, you're gonna have to think about it and drill it. So let's do a drill for you. Soft right arm, three juggle balls feelings of the backswing, coil hinge wide, drop in the slot, kind of, I've kind of re-rotated just to give it a blast there. So you can see now, the more I twist, let's go exaggerated, shall we? The more I twist, and so now it's giving me the option to kind of really face towards that rear camera, the more it's, the easier it is to fold my right arm in front of me with width. Now, because I've got this massive turn away from the ball without too much strain, because I'm basically turning everything without locking right leg, because I've twisted so far, and my body and my shoulders are facing so far back, how easy now is this arm to get in front of me? If you haven't got that, or if you're keeping too stationary with your legs or your trunk hasn't moved at all, and you're kind of anxious to get into the ball halfway up your backswing, and you haven't completed your backswing, that is virtually impossible to get this right arm working correctly. And you're gonna to have to create power by another source and it's probably gonna be your top half. To be honest with you, this is for everyone. And it's from a, from a YouTube coaching perspective, we call it. It's hard to kind of layer something on for everyone because someone's a bit over the top. Elite players are probably a little bit more under. How do you kind of give someone something for everyone that caters for everyone? This is it. Because you can't not now get 50% of your problems from here now you've got your arms out in front of you. That's going to help everyone. Even if you come slightly over the top from there, it's going to be less because you're not now forward, you're not now kind of top half dominant. Right, so if Trev stays there, he's pretty tired today, so let's hope he doesn't kind of freak out a little bit. Let's try one. So drill first. Twist, drop in front of me, tiny swing through. No strain, everyone, very light. Oh, sorry, I forgot the old right arm. Soft fingers, light grip, that allows me to hinge. Everything is soft. Now, I'm not gonna stop at the top now because I don't like really stopping at the top, it's a bit false. So if you do a few kind of feelings in the garden, on the range, right, there's my feeling, I'm gonna trust it. Twist complete, drop, hold it. Wow, I'm so light, everyone, there's no tension. Really wish you could feel what I was feeling. This stays the same, so there's a big twist. I'm not moving my head too much. Big twist with my torso, right arms in front of me. I'm dropping in the slot. Now there's two ways. If you're a slicer of the ball, you wanna be able to get this club in a bit quicker whilst the stationary top half and your shoulders, you stay in there. It'll probably a little bit of kick. So you're releasing your hands a bit more. The hookers, pushers, probably the more elite of us, and Trev's off and running, is the same. Elbow touching my belly, club behind me, little swing, so there has to be a bit more rotation of the body there. Because the hookers of the ball, the right to left spinners are telling you you've got, probably got too much hand movement as well. So you want to, uh, hand movement, so you want to be able to have that torso rotation. But this video is all about right arm and how we can slot it and the importance of this right arm. And you can see from the front view probably how far in front of my pocket it is. Now I've got control of the club face. Even if I release my hands and draw it, I've still got to release with connection. And I can't remember when I did a video, but connection only happens, not the top of the backswing, because I've got that much width. It happens about there. So it drops, touches, and then you're off and running, depending on what release you want to do. Because remember, release isn't just your hands. It all depends what your fault is. If you're a slicer of the ball, you wanna have more hand and arm release and less body. 
If you're a hooker of the ball, you want to have more trunk rotation or what shot you want to hit. If you want to hit a little hold up, the steering wheel is your body. But if you want to draw it, you need to get a little bit of more hand release. So the importance of this right elbow, folks, absolutely massive. Twist, hinge, whip, and then drop in the slot. Can't really feel that, folks, the drop in the slot bit, but you can, watch this, do slow motions. So I can, there's awareness of pace. So I'm gonna do a one out of 10 speed. So there's the twist, there's the hinge, there's the whip, drop, turn. Hit the ground a bit. Remember, it's not about re release. Remember, it's not about result. Twist, hinge, drop, turn. I've sped that up a little bit. It's probably a two in my head. I'll probably change direction a bit quicker than I should, but remember, laying any changes, you need awareness time. Wide, drop, turn. This is what, these are what the pros do, everyone. They do these exercises, you just don't see it. Because when they come to a golf tournament, they're on the range, they hit 30 balls and they're off. And we're all standing there going, hold on a minute, surely you should be practicing harder than that. They've done it all. I'm gonna ramp this up to like four out of 10 speed. Practice that everyone, even if you don't hit a ball. But hitting a ball is always good doing this exercise because it kind of brings you a little bit more wanting to hit a good shot. So this really takes that away from us, but it still allows you to hit a shot. So five out of 10. Remember it's not about result, thank goodness, because I'm thinning, hit the mat a couple of times. It's all about trying to slot this right arm in front of me and feel the touch when it comes down to here. Five again. Yep, felt that into my belly. The ever increasing size. Seven out of 10 feeling, right. This is gonna be a bit harder now, I'm gonna to have to do a bit of trust. Twist. So if you're not quite sure, then you can bring it back to what number can you definitely do it with? Well, I know I can definitely do it with like a four. Oh yes, that felt beautiful. So that's the building block for success, everyone. So taking that pace off and building that pace throughout the whole practice session. You could spend the first half an hour or the first half of the golf balls just building those, that pace swing. If I was walking behind someone doing this, so forget about the actual technique of it. Let's just see the, the pace of it. I think, oh, he knows what he's doing. In a silly way, let me turn around and do left-handed. So I don't know where I am feel-wise. don't even know how to grip it, right. So remember, if I was behind, so now I'm kind of turning myself into a beginner here. If I was behind, so there's my twist. There's my hinge, width, drop. So I can't, definitely can't feel that as good as my right-handed swing, obviously. I lose the front camera, obviously. Okay, so I need to twist more. There we go. Twist and hinge. There we go. That is difficult. So I know where you feel now. So nice soft left arm now. Twist, hinge. Drop, oh, I felt my left arm into my shoulder, into my belly there. So I know how you feel, it's difficult. But remember, taking the result away from you will guarantee success. So right arm and right elbow in the golf swing, everyone, is one of the steering wheels for consistency. If you're new here and you like this type of content, please subscribe. Everyone who has, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, every Friday, I will be posting a video and uh, for myself and Trev who's gone into the other side of the academy with his ball, thank goodness, we'll see you on the next one. See you next Friday everyone, have a good golfing week. Cheerio!